Sexual selection is really a specific type of natural selection. It's selection for traits that's, that are directly related to reproduction. So they're traits that make it more likely that individuals will um, find or choose a mate or have successful mating. So this can be things like um, mating behaviors like dancing or songs or things like that um, that are oftentimes affected by sexual selection. So again, it is a type of natural selection, but one that's specific to traits related to mating. In many species, sexual selection is primarily going to influence male traits um, rather than female traits. And this really just has to do with some basic reproductive biology, which is that females generally limit reproductive capacity in a population, not males. In fact, so much so that many times if we want to predict what's going to happen to a population, we don't even consider males because they're not the limiting factor. Um, and this is because um, for example, in female humans, the, the, the female can only carry one offspring typically, right? So one is about, there can be twins and triplets, but one is kind of standard um, biologically. So a female can carry one offspring for a nine month period. Um, really, when you add on to lactation and all that, it's more like one offspring per two years. Um, whereas the male human produces millions of sperm a day, right? So it's the female's ability to carry that offspring that becomes limiting to how many offspring there can be. Um, and that's true again in lots of species. So if you look at birds, same thing. The female maybe can lay five eggs, but the male makes millions of sperm. Um, and it's the, the female's ability to lay those five eggs in the spring that limits the reproductive capacity of that population. Um, or another way that we can also kind of think of it is that um, females also end up doing the choosing for that reason. So a population might have 10 females, um, but because the male makes so much sperm relative to what the female's biology is doing, um, one male could cause 10 females to be pregnant. Um, so again, the females are limiting to the, the reproductive capacity. Just one male can impregnate a whole population of females due to this difference in production of, of reproductive cells, okay? So for that reason, because the females are the limiting factor and the males really can just get by with even just one of them, the females usually get to be more choosy, right? So if you look at most species that sexually reproduce, it's oftentimes the female that's getting to do the choosing. If there's choosing done, right? Some organisms just let their sperm go and it just has to find the egg or whatever. But if there's choosing done where there's actually made choice, um, the female is often the one doing the choosing. There's many males that she's choosing from. And so this starts to affect male characteristics. The male has to attract or engage the female some way, and that has led to selection of traits that attract the female. So there's a couple of varieties of sexual selection. Um, there is intrasexual selection and intersexual selection. So intrasexual is when it's between members of the same sex. And again, this is usually impacting males more. So this might be male versus male. So this is when males are directly competing for mating opportunities or territory. So it's oftentimes fighting behavior. So you see traits that relate to fighting um, be selected in this way. So horns, antlers, enlarged claws, all of these are affecting the ability for males to fight with each other um, for the opportunity to mate with the females in an area or in a territory. Intersexual selection is between opposite sexes. So this is the mate choice, right? The females getting to choose between the males, right? So females choose desirable traits in the male. And this really is like desirable traits. Like the female doesn't know like which male is like better, like which one is surviving more or whatever. Like I hate when they say that in nature shows, like she's not choosing the best genes. She's choosing which male she thinks is most sexy. Okay, so a lot of this times it really is like she likes his dance. She likes his call, right? 
And yeah, as scientists, we can extrapolate that that means that the males may be more fit, but the female just likes the way he moves or likes the way his song is, okay? Um, and that's why she's choosing that male. And so what the females find sexy are oftentimes really showy, elaborate characteristics. So we might see bright colors, for example. That's a super common one in birds. Um, so bright colors or, again, elaborate dances, calls, um, different things like that that could attract the female. There is something called cryptic female choice which is um, when in some cases, and this is not that common, but just as a, a sort of interesting curiosity of nature, um, there is cryptic female choice where the genital tract actually selects against certain sperm. Um, so if a sperm is from a genetically related individual, then that sperm won't be able to travel up to the egg. Um, and so in some organisms, this can help inhibit inbreeding. This is not in humans, okay? I just want to be explicit there. Our um, gen uh, genital tracts do not have this ability, but you do see it in nature. Again, mostly what we're dealing with when we're talking about sexual selection is mate choice, when females have a preference for a certain showy characteristic. So some examples, again, of traits that look like this. Um, here we have uh, in, in, intrasexual selection. There's that enlarged claw of the male to intimidate and fight with other males for territory so that he's the one who's around when the female's nearby. Um, and then we have the peacock, which is probably one of the most well-known examples of sexual selection, of intersexual selection in nature. This is the male peacock. So it has these be the beautiful, fancy peacock feathers, you know, you know, kind of look like that. And then there's like the, the eye of the peacock feather. That's all in the males, like this bright turquoise color with yellow, has this beautiful, this beautiful dance that he does with the feather. Here's the female. She's brown. So she doesn't need to have all this fancy, elaborate um, decorations on her because she's the one who gets to do the choosing. Okay. Um, so one of the things that you get is in that intersexual selection often causes is what's called sexual dimorphism. So intersexual selection helps contribute to sexual dimorphism. Again, that's when you have males and females with distinct appearances. And this can be dramatic, like the peacock versus the peahen, so the, the male peacock versus the female peahen. Um, or it can be more subtle. So humans also show sexual dimorphism. Um, so consider things like facial hair or body size and muscle mass. Um, so humans and, and other primates all show more subtle sexual dimorphism, but it's still present. Um, so one of the, the problems that sort of arises for males that are selected in this way for these traits um, is that these traits can also be a disadvantage. So think about the male peacock versus the peahen. If you wanted to catch the male peacock versus the male peahen, who would be easier to catch? The peacock, of course, right? Because you can see it more easily, the fail tether, the fail the tail feathers are long and sort of awkward, so it can't run as well and get away as well. So um, these elaborate showy characteristics can increase predation. So that's important to realize why there's a limit to just how fancy the male can look, right? So the male's feathers can't just keep getting longer and brighter because if they get any much longer or brighter than this, then every single male peacock's just going to get eaten, okay? So sexual selection is balanced by predation, okay? Overall, you have traits that can decrease survival but increase reproductive success as long as they stay in balance, okay? Um, so you won't ever get the peacock feathers getting any bigger because they can't get any bigger without 
causing there to be too much predation. Um, so this has been experimentally demonstrated that there's kind of a balance and an effect of predation. Um, so in a famous study, they looked at the male guppy and it's in, in the wild. Um, and females uh, in uh, the female guppy likes brightly colored males. And in places where there are not that many predators, you'll see males that are very, very brightly colored. But if you look at um, the guppies in places where there's more predators, there is actually less of the brightly colored males because they get eaten more. Okay. So um, again, there's a balancing act, right? So those brightly colored males are going to be able to have a more reproductive success as long as they can get away from the predator. Okay. So again, this balancing act is occurring.